good afternoon and good evening. My name is Sir Meerkat and welcome back to the Moto Meerkat channel. Thanks to 2020 being completely higgledy piggledy with plans in every which way. There's been continued speculation as to whether it could be beneficial to Formula 1 to introduce new rules and regulations to spice up the action. And with Mercedes basically dominating the first three races, I'd probably have to agree. And whether this be simple ideas such as adding sprint races like they do in Formula 2 or downright ridiculous ones like Bernie Eccleston Eccleston said uh, he wanted to put sprinklers on the track to create a wet race. Bernie, what are you on about? And there's been continued pressure to change up the qualifying format that we see today in Formula 1. And these suggestions have included single lap qualifying, which is where each driver gets an out lap, a hot lap, and an in lap, and if you make a mistake, then you're messed. Or a super pole session, like they do in Formula E. Now this is where they all go out and have a normal qualifying session, and then the top six have to go out again for a single lap session and the quickest gets pole position. But the seemingly classic qualifying format that we know today has actually undergone many different iterations over the years and this is what I'm going to be looking back on today. period of the sport, before the World Championship had even been created, drivers would often draw lots to get their qualifying position. And what this means is basically it was completely done by luck. It's, it's practically like drawing straws. The, the driver that picks the longest straw would qualify first, and the driver that picked the smallest straw would qualify last. Which does seem a tad bit unfair, but could you imagine that today? Nicholas Latifi picks out the longest straw. It'd be bloody brilliant. But I can see how there, that, that wouldn't quite go well with Ferrari Mercedes, would it? it was finally set in the rules and regulations that the fastest driver from practice and qualifying would be at the front of the grid for the start of the race. And until 1996, the qualifying schedule was, was relatively simple. Drivers had two 60-minute sessions to set a quick time, one on Friday and one on Saturday. The quickest lap time for each driver from, from both of the sessions would be compiled together and that would create the, the running order for the race. In the late 80s and early 90s, there was also the addition of a pre qualifying session. Now this was due to the sheer number of people that wanted to race. Basically the maximum amount of cars that was allowed on the grid was 26. So that's 13 teams each with two cars. But there was actually 15 teams with two cars, meaning that there were 30 cars wanting to start the race. Obviously this couldn't happen. So they meant that they had to put in this pre-qualifying to knock out four of the drivers before qualifying had even taken place. In 1996 and 2002, the qualifying was reduced from the two one-hour sessions to just one one-hour session. And during this single session, the drivers were only allowed to complete a maximum of 12 laps. This created an unintended negative consequence of the teams basically waiting inside their pit garage for the track to sort of evolve and get better so they had the best chance of getting that top quick time during their 12 allotted laps. And that would mean that since loads of the teams are waiting in the pits, it wasn't particularly interesting to watch on the TV. those problems from the one hour shootout, one lap qualifying was introduced for the 2003 season. On Friday, drivers would exit the pits one by one in championship order, setting one flying lap and then re-entering the pits. Then on Saturday, the process would be repeated again, at this time with the slowest driver from Friday's session going out first and then the quickest driver obviously going out last. And this theoretically meant that the person who was fastest in Friday's session had the best shot of setting the quickest time in the Saturday session. And to further spice things up, the drivers would have to set each lap under full race fuel. But the problem with this format was that people were unintentionally negatively affected by changing track conditions and the changing weather. In 2004, the shootout would be slightly refined. Both sessions would now be held on the Saturday, with the running order of the first session being decided by the finishing order of the previous race, rather than the actual championship order. But this created an even bigger problem of malicious manipulation of the sessions by the teams. And they were able to do this because having both the sessions on the same day would then allow them to more easily plan their first session to get the best out of the second session. This was proven by Michael Schumacher when he admitted that he intentionally spun in the first 
qualifying session of the day because the Ferrari team had a qu quite a big hunch that it was going to rain near the end of the second session. And because he spun in the first session, it would mean he got a worse time, meaning that he would be one of the first people to go out in the second session. And as there was rain coming near the end of the session, it would mean that he could set a fast time in the dry and most of his competitors that had set good times in the first session would then have to do qualifying in the wet, thus meaning they got a much worse time in the second session, meaning that they started way down on the grid compared to Schumacher. Which you've got to say like, fair play, you're getting the best tactics out of that as possible, but equally that really messes up the championship and means people are doing tactics and horrible little bits rather than actually fighting for who has the best time. So in 2005 the system was further tweaked again. It was decided that the times from each session would be combined to create an aggregate time. But this was not liked by either the teams or the fans because it completely sucked the drama out of the session. And it was thus dropped only six races into the 2005 season. And for the remaining 13 races of the season there would just be one singular session for the drivers to set one lap on full race fuel. But this was also dropped at the end of the 2005 season in favour of a new system. After many, many years, F1 finally went back to its roots and started doing multi-lap qualifying sessions again in 2006. But this time, there was a twist. Q1 and Q2 would reduce the grid size to 10 drivers, leaving them to battle it out for pole position. And this format was way, way, way more exciting for both the drivers, the teams, and the spectators. We were loving it. But that doesn't mean it didn't have its problems. All drivers in Q3 still had to set their laps on fuel race fuel, which meant that a lot of the time the cars were just lugging about trying to do a lap time, but they were just all over the shop. There was also a complicated fuel credit system that was in place, but it's so confusing. I'm not going to go into detail of it in today's video, but it basically meant the drivers were going around just doing uncompetitive laps of burning fuel, which was not very interesting for spectators. And that meant that in 2008, the FIA tweaked the rules again to eliminate the boring burning of fuel that was taking place. And then again in 2010, the rules were changed massively. Refueling was completely banned. And this meant the drivers would run on low fuel throughout the qualifying sessions, throughout Q1, Q2, and Q3, bringing back the dramatic low fuel balls to the wall runs that we know and love today. But yeah, as I said, that reaches the present day, the present format that we currently have. Do you like the qualifying format that we have at the moment, Q1, Q2, Q3? It does produce some good upsets sometimes, but there can be bits that you think, bloody hell, this is boring, I want to get it changed. And be sure to let me know down in the comments if you were the head of Formula 1, head of FIA, the big boy that was allowed to make these big decisions, would you keep the current qualifying format that we have with Q1, Q2, Q3? Would you bring back one of the old systems that I've just mentioned, or would you bring in a completely new system, like the Super Bowl I mentioned from Formula E? I'd genuinely be really interested to hear your thoughts, because there's, there's positives from each different bit. If we can find one that sort of amalgamates the good bits of all of them, that'd be brilliant. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to drop a little like on it down below. And while you're down there, click subscribe on my channel as well. That big red button really wants you to press it, because I make motorsport content every Tuesday and every Friday that you're not going to want to miss. But yeah, as I said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see all of you meerkats later. Goodbye, guys. Thank you.